here is our linear search from the previous video. If you missed the previous video, click right here. And you can watch the previous video. Very critical that you watch the previous video before watching this video. Um, here's our linear search. We also learned about invariance. If you missed the invariance video, ah, here it is. Okay, watch both those videos in this playlist before watching this video. Uh, what are the invariants of this linear search? Now, if you're looking at this loop and just saying, Jamie, you, you cut a glove up with ketchup in it and taught us about invariance, and I have no idea what you mean by invariant here. Well, let me ask you the, a different question. What must be true every time the loop executes? Okay, the best students are the ones that raise their hands and engage with me. Even if the student's answer is completely off, it doesn't matter because that student is setting up their neurons in their head to learn something. So it's critical for you to pause the video and in the comments, tell me what you think the invariants of this linear search are. And don't Google it, that does, that's not gonna help you. Take your wildest guess, put it in the comments. That's for you. If you've ever done a fourth grade science project, they have you set up the scientific process. And, and I can't even tell you what the scientific process is, but I can tell you the most important part of that process. The most important part of that process is setting up the hypothesis, the educated guess. If you don't set up an educated guess, you're not setting up your neurons to learn something. Okay, the idea is you set up an experiment, you take a guess as to what's gonna happen, and if what's going to happen is what you thought would happen, great. You learned a little bit of something. But if what happens is completely opposite from what you thought would happen, you just connected or burned, fried, whatever you want to call it, some neurons in your head. And that's the whole point of fighting with this stuff. I'll make a video talking about wrestling with code. But the more you can guess, hypothesize, set up those neurons, and then the more you can fail, the more you'll learn. I know a lot of you make comments like, oh, Jamie, you're so smart. No, I've just failed a lot more than you. <laughs> I have a lot more failure time than you do. So the more you can fail, the better. So in the comments, it is critical for you to drop your hypothesis, what you feel the invariance of this loop bar. And I don't care if it's the day I post this video or if it's 10 years from now, I still get notified when you drop such a hypothesis. Drop a hypothesis. If this video is 10 years old, that's okay. Drop it in the comments. Go. Oh, by the way, while you're at it, like the video for me. Uh, you'll notice I have our array here, at least my array, 73615092, 73615092. And I also have the indices up here. The indices are in green. The values are in red. A common mistake for new students to do are to mix up an index where a value is expected or mix up a value where an index is expected. For example, here we're saying the array sub i equal equal target value. Sub i gives us a value inside of the array. However, i here is traversing all these indices. So it's critical not to mix these up. I mean, something I'll see new students, brand new students do, and it's fine. It's fine that you do this if you're brand new, but you might forget your array, all right? You'll just say, hey, if i equals target value, well, at that point, you just crossed the streams. Okay, if you ever watch Ghostbusters, the first one, they fight the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Like, oh, we're going to have to cross the streams. We should never cross the streams. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go watch the first Ghostbusters because it's awesome. But right here, I have crossed the streams. I equal equal target value. All right, well, I is either going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Whereas target value, I'm looking for a value inside of here, the red numbers. All right, in fact, maybe it'll help if I underline this in red and underline this in green. We just cross the streams. Oh, no, don't do that. But if I clean this code back up to what I had here, control Z, 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 the array sub I jumps into the array here. So that gives us a value compared to a value, not an index to a value, a value compared to a value. Get that through your head. There's indices and there's values. Don't mix up the two. Okay, what's the invariant? What's the invariant? I'm beating around the bush here. The invariant of this loop is that when the loop begins, all values that are at indices less than i are not the value we are looking for. Let's see, what's i? i is going to be an index, so I'll do i in green. i starts at zero, right? We say for int i 
equals zero. In fact, I think we need to put the invariant down here. I'm gonna I'm gonna type it up. All right, there you go. I dropped the invariant there. Every time an iteration of this loop begins, all values at indices less than i are not the target value. Well, let's look here. i is zero right now. So all indices less than i. Well, there are none. <laughs> So the so so they can't be the target value. There we go. We maintained our invariant. Congrats to us. <laughs> Let's see if we can maintain the invariant on the next iteration of the loop. I'm I'm gonna look for the value one here. So let's see, one's down here, but we don't know that. Okay, we're starting here at zero. We say, hey, if the array sub i is equal to target, well, seven here is not equal to one. All right, I'll say our target value is one here because that's what we. Passed in right there. Oh, look, it was green. I'm changing it to red. I just crossed the streams. Oh, no, I just nuked the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Let's see. Seven's not equal to one, so we're going to skip that. Uh, we're going to I++. plus plus. So I moves up to here, and we're going to begin another iteration of this loop. All right, well, let's check our invariant here. All values at indices less than I are not the target value. Well, that's true. The only indice right now that is less than i is indice 0, and the value at indice 0 is not the target value we're looking for. Congrats to us. We maintain the invariant. Not a shabby deal. All right. If the array sub i is equal to target value, well, the array sub i is 3. Is that equal to 1? No. All right. i++. plus plus. Let's move i on up, and we're going to begin yet another iteration of this loop. Is this invariant maintained? All values at indices less than i are not the target value. Well, that's true. i is 2, and so the indices less than i would be 0 and 1, and these two values are not the target value we're looking for. Look at us maintaining that invariant. We're so awesome. I know this seems like a simple thing or a simple concept, but it's so critical because when you're learning algorithms, if you can't set up your invariants and maintain your invariants every iteration of your algorithm, then you can't prove that your algorithm's correct. You don't know if it's actually accomplishing the right things. We'll talk about that in the next video, but there you go. That's the invariant of this loop. Eventually, well, here, we'll do an I++. We'll move on to three. We'll move on to three. Okay, is it true that all values at indices less than i are not the target value? Well, that's true. 0, 1, 2. These values are not the target value we're looking for. We're looking for a 1, and these all are not 1s. Okay, now we come in here and we say, oh, look! If the array sub i, which is a 1 here, is equal to 1, return i. Well, i is 3, so we're going to return a 3. We're going to return a 3 right here at the call of index of... Index of the value of 5. Oh, that's embarrassing. I should have said index of the value of 1. I should change that. Uh, that gets 3, which is the index of the 1. I get too many students who are bright, but they don't understand this invariant thing. And so if I break it down to a simple linear search where, hey, you can maintain an invariant every iteration of your loop, and they're like, oh, I get it, I get it. It's actually slightly mathematical, but I'm a programmer, and I'm, we can deal with math. No, I'm turning you into an engineer. We're sticking with the engineer, and engineers understand this stuff. If you want to be a programmer or just a coder, a hacker, go for it. Get off my channel. But if you want to be an engineer, that's our goal here, and it's critical for you to understand how these invariants apply to your own algorithms because we're going to use invariants throughout this entire playlist. This is so core fundamental. Why do you think I'm introducing it so early in the playlist? In the next video, I'm going to show you how we can use our invariant to guarantee that our algorithm is correct. See you there.